Um, my name is Carolina Robinson. I'm the director here um, at the University of Alabama's Education Abroad Office. I've got David Blair here with us, who's the director of the Veteran and Military Affairs Office. So he's going to take us through um, a presentation today about post 9-11 GI Bill and study abroad. Um, we are going to be recording this session for um, future use for all our students who couldn't be with us live. So um, I'm, gonna let go, I'm gonna let David go ahead and start, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to just pop on or um, put something in the chat and I'll monitor that. So go ahead, David. Okay, ready? All right, so uh, I am, as, as uh, uh, Carolina said, I'm David Blair, I'm the Director for Veteran and Military Affairs. And I'm gonna just take you through the process of post 9-11 and how it works with study abroad. And just keep in mind, there are two ways to uh, use study abroad, whether it's uh, in the, as a direct enrolled student or as a faculty led student. So we'll kind of just go through those pieces with you. So first under the direct enrollment, uh, this is where the uh, Institution of Higher Learning offers the course. Um, obviously the course has to lead to a standard college degree uh, or, or it's equivalent and some institutions overseas may have an equivalent uh, that's not quite a degree called something else. Uh, the course uh, has to meet the requirements uh, of all the VA regulations. Uh, the program of ed education at the foreign school must be approved by the VA so there's a there's a system called WEAMS and uh, you can look uh, in the WEAM system and see if that school is approved, if you ever have any questions there. Uh, the student also enrolls directly into the foreign school in the direct enrollment program. And the student is certified by that school certifying official. So if you're in a direct enrollment program, you're gonna be talking with that certifying official for that school and not the certifying official here at the University of Alabama. Now what uh, the VA will pay uh, under post 9-11, They'll pay your tuition up to the cap for that academic year. And right now that's $25,162.14. They give you up to $1,000 per academic year for your books. And then you'll get your monthly housing allowance based on the foreign rate uh, under the direct enrollment program. And it's $1,833 per month. Now what the post 9-11 will not pay for is your airfare and your travel fees or any third party fees. So if you have any third party stuff involved, then, then uh, the VA will not pay for those. Now this is the most common uh, program as the instructor led program where you're gonna have an instructor from the university here uh, at Alabama that's gonna be uh, involved in the program. They're gonna arrange the classes. Uh, they're gonna uh, more than likely go on the visit with you um, and uh, I think that's normally what's going with uh, these study abroad programs. Uh, the payment of the course is the same as if you were attending campus classes here at UA. So whatever you would be paying for those classes at the University of Alabama, that's what the VA is gonna pay for. So uh, there's no extra fees involved or anything like that. Uh, we would institute uh, the certification process here. We'll make sure that the certification is done with the VA. Uh, we'll work with the advisors with study abroad to make sure that we've got the correct paperwork and what we need on uh, the course program and the cost and uh, your transient forms for uh, your courses that are accredited for your degree program. <clears throat> and then, um, some folks don't know this, but you can attend any amount of time as long as it's an instructor-led program. So it could be a program for a week, a month, or an entire semester. I know normally it is an entire semester, uh, but there are other options with that. All right, under that instructor-led payment program, the post 9-11 will pay for your tuition. And as I said, it's all tuition and fee payments for an in-state student at the main campus of the public school. So uh, whatever's charged on your bill, that's what we'll be billing the VA. You'll also get to up to the $1,000 per academic year for your books and supplies. And then your housing allowance will be uh, based on the zip code of uh, Tuscaloosa uh, for that semester. And now what we'll not pay for again, airfare, hotel and travel fees, or any third party fees. 
So what's not approved? So any kind of contract agreements or any exchange programs. Uh, as of August, the exchange programs went off the list. Uh, so we're not doing any more exchange programs. VA will not pay for those any longer. Uh, and so uh, just things to keep in mind. Uh, and I don't think that we have any issues with that as far as I know. Again, what's not approved. So private companies offering study abroad programs are not approved by the VA. Uh, there are many organizations that facilitate a study, uh, student studying abroad. Uh, their convenient programs have led schools to partner with them so students can attend overseas. And these examples are the International Studies Abroad, uh, Institute for Study Abroad at Butler University and the National Association of International Educators. Um, and then again, the post 9-11 will not pay tuition and fees, books and supplies, housing allowance, airfare, hotel travel fees, or any third party fees uh, under these private companies. So I'll just run you through a couple of scenarios so you kind of got an idea uh, and you understand how the study abroad works. So we'll just take you through the first one. The homeschool charges tuition and fees plus additional study abroad fees. The homeschool has an arrangement with the host school or pays the host school. So the VA could pay the homeschool's tuition up to the public in-state amount. Uh, the VA would pay no charges directly to the host school. Uh, room and board charges cannot be included in tuition cost. Uh, so if those are lumped in in some program, those costs have to be broken out uh, and we can only turn in the tuition cost. Uh, the VA can provide the monthly housing allowance for you to use. Uh, this occurs if the student is, has to be enrolled in more than half time. And the VA could provide books and supply stipend as well, as we said, $1,000. Uh, VA can, could not pay for any fee specifically due to the participation in the study abroad program. So there's some programs out there that have a specific uh, fee that they would charge and uh, the VA would not pay for those. Uh, the only way they will pay for those, if it is mandatory for you to take this study abroad program within your degree program. So if you have a degree program that says you must study abroad, it's part of the curriculum and in the catalog, uh, then the VA would pay those uh, additional fees, okay? Uh, the schools that charge a comprehensive fee, including the home school's tuition, have to be, be uh, broken out and the fee uh, with the fee and report to charge tuition only, as I said. Uh, and again, the VA cannot pay airfare, amenities fees, or any host school fees under that scenario. So scenario number two, the home school charges a fee for participation in a study abroad program or faculty-led fees. The student is required to pay the host school the tuition and course fees charged by the host school. The VA could pay the tuition and fees up to the national maximum tuition and fee rate. Room and board charges cannot be included in the tuition cost. The VA can pay fees that student would normally pay for attending the institution. And this does not include fees specific to study abroad students. Again, the VA could provide the monthly housing allowance. Uh, again, the book stipend and would pay the tuition directly to the host school. VA cannot pay airfare or study abroad fees charged by the home school. Okay. Number three, student enrolls directly in the host school. Then the VA would pay the tuition and fees up to the resident maximum tuition uh, and fee charges. The VA can pay the fees the student would normally pay for attending the institution. This does not include fees specific to study abroad students again. The VA could pay the tuition and fees up to the national maximum tuition and fee rate. The room and board charges cannot be included in the tuition cost. And the VA can pay the fees the student would normally pay for attending the institution. And again, this does not include fees specific to study abroad students. The VA could provide your monthly housing allowance again, provide the book and supply stipend, and uh, the VA would pay tuition directly to the host school. The VA cannot pay, again, the airfare, study abroad fees charged by the home school. 
Okay. Number four, third party charges a fee to a student to participate in a study abroad program. VA cannot pay any third party charges. Okay. Under scenario five, the student enrolls in a different US home school to participate in a study abroad program. The school the student enrolls in would be treated as the home school and the VA would pay as above depending on how the student is paying tuition and fees for the study abroad courses. Okay. And that's the spiel. The study abroad's a fairly uh, simple program uh, with those two options uh, because we don't have any branch campuses out there. So it limits what we can do here at the University of Alabama. Um, and it limits some of those programs. Um, and of course, the uh, study abroad program advisors, they know which programs are out there and what we can certify for. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, concerns, uh, please feel free to contact the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs uh, anytime. You can reach us by our VMA email um, and you can go on our website at vets.ua.edu and contact us there from our contact page. Um, if you have specific questions you'd like to ask the VA, uh, put the number here, the 1-888-442-4551. You can contact the VA directly. Um, if you have questions about other schools that may be overseas that you wanna look at direct enrollment in, um, you may wanna to talk to a VA counselor about that as well. So that's what we have for study abroad. Thank you, David. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question and then I'll let other people kind of chime in. So um, at UA, for we've, we've got a number of direct enroll um, options and most of those are for maybe an entire semester abroad. That, that's where you usually see most of the direct enrolls. Um, and we've got over 50 faculty led or instructor led programs at UA. So there's there's basically a study abroad program per every college that's led by an instructor. So those would work. Um, but I was going to ask you, we have an agreement with um, other SEC schools where we sometimes um, maybe send a student on an engineering program at Florida as a study abroad program or something through Vanderbilt or UGA. Um, would students be able to enroll in a faculty led program just not here at UA, but if it's run through maybe another state school? Yeah, you're talking about, so if they're gonna go through that school itself, then they should be working with that certifying official at that school. Perfect. Uh, since they're gonna be going through those programs that the school led by that faculty or that instructor led from that university. Um, you know, I would just recommend, you know, that, that, uh, that, we have that we get the transiency letter back to us. If we're if we're if we have them under post 911, they're using GI Bill. Then I would recommend that you know they communicate with us um, that that uh, official letter of transiency, uh, giving them credit for those courses are there, um, just so that we can keep an eye on the courses that they're taking, uh, making sure that they're not taking the courses twice. Sure. Uh, you know things like that that could affect their GI Bill payments. Sure. But that does, that does offer maybe another option if the 50 UA faculty-led programs isn't something they could look at other institutions that are kind of close to us where we probably already have um, articulated agreements where we know these courses are from Old Miss or from UGA that already, you know, will count as... Yeah, long, as long as the, the, you know, as long as those courses are counting toward their degree, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's a difference in, you know, manda the mandatory uh parts that the va says you know it has to be mandatory for us to pay those fees sure you know that are additional but uh as long as those credits are being counted toward their degree program then the va would pay for those okay wonderful and we um we again as he mentioned are are happy to help um, in our roles to help students find the right program for them that meets your academic uh, majors or degree requirements, but can also count for um, the post 9-11 funding that will help and support the, the tuition payments and the thousand. Uh, that was going to be my other question. Is the book stipend always a thousand? Um, it well, it, yeah, so, um, so it's based on the number of credit hours that you're taking. Got it. So it's basically $41.67 per credit hour. 
Got it. So, um, yeah, it just depends how many credit hours they're taking over that semester, the amount they get paid. Um, and they may use up, you know, they may use up $600 the first semester in study abroad. And then if they come back to UA and then uh, go to school the next semester, they may only have $400 left for the year. So they sure. get that up to $1,000 still applies whether they're here or whether they're going study abroad. Uh, so Nakia asked, will semester at sea cover the, uh, excuse me, will the GI Bill cover semester at sea? So currently semester at sea is one of those provider programs that will not be covered on the GI Bill. Because semester at sea is not an entity that offers um, academic degrees. So that's kind of one way that we remember um, what, what would work. But that's a great question. It's a popular program on our, um, in our office. Now, we do um, have lots of students do semester at sea, and we do know kind of other tricks um, to get the cost lowered. Um, for instance, we have a lot of our students do, um, they may qualify for work study, and so they work on the ship while they're studying abroad, and that reduces the cost of the, the, sh the ship considerably. So, great question. Anybody else have any other questions or ideas? Um, I've got Lacey here. She's our um, liaison between the VMA office and our EA office. Thanks for being here, Lacey. Do you know what would be a question that you probably get from a lot of students that you know you just want to make sure that they're clear on? Or um, most of them is what type of programs can they do? Uh, so finding out what the program is that they are able to do, um, because we do have some, uh, obviously our faculty led and then um, how do they find the appropriate ones abroad. So going to Weems and learning how to use that and search for the different schools that they can go to. So uh, we'll typically show them how to do that. Um, also, we do have a few providers that are also um, schools, so uh, we can help point them in the direction of them. So uh, they're not only providers, but they're also domestic institutions, so we can send them in that direction as well. Thank you. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Does anybody have any other questions? And if not, that is great. I think we've got um, the contact for the VMA office. Um, Lacey, do you want to possibly put your email up there for students yeah. to uh, go ahead and write that down? So in case that they need a place to start on our side, we can definitely point them in the right direction. I'll let Lacey um, add her email to the chat. I really appreciate you, David, for presenting with us today. And um, we're going to, as I said, record this session so we can have it up um, and you could share it with family members if they need it and, uh, and available for other students who, who have questions. So thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it.